Hello everyone, Shawnee here. Thank you so much um, for sticking around. <laughs> I know it's been a hot minute since I've actually, you know, created a video. Um, I think I've done like a little tutorial, like I did a short kind of as, as a test. Um, and if you had noticed that, or that it was Python, because that's actually what I'm learning right now. Um, but let me kind of like backtrack because I don't think I ever really talked about why I started this channel in the first place. But basically, I started because I wanted to learn programming. Uh, I chose Swift because I really liked the my iPhone and I, I thought, you know, maybe I'll, you know, create an app and put it on the app store and things like that. So I really got involved in the community. Um, I did learn a lot. I actually did create an app, just never released it. So did I really create it? I don't know. <laughs> I did. I had the repository to prove it, but <laughs> I decided not to go through with it. And w another thing is that my day job was taking up a lot of my time. So I really decided, you know what, I'll just focus on my day job and just kind of put, put the you know, Swift developer dreams is kind of like on hold. So, which brings me back to kind of why I started this channel. Probably the reason why you subscribed was because I was talking about Swift and development and things like that. Um, so, <laughs> I don't think that I ever really said what I did as my day job, um, but I have always been in. IT. I've always been in technology. Um, my day job was actually an implementation specialist where I supported a SaaS product. If you don't know what SaaS means, it basically means a software as a service. Um, and basically it's kind of like an online pu publishing kind of web app. Um, and what I did was I helped clients basically onboard. Uh, in the technical aspect of onboarding, where you look at all the data, you look at the information they're bringing in, their particular business rules, because every business has different business rules, and then you adapt the software to fit their needs, and that's where I fit in. I would look at the things that they needed and the things that they had, what the system could handle, and then anything that we didn't have, we would build. So whether it's a variable or business logic. Uh, we actually had a, a visual programming language halfway through being there. Uh, I actually was able to use the things that I was learning with Swift so that that knowledge or the you know programming knowledge I was able to adapt to that particular programming language that we're using which was basically blocky. I don't know if you are familiar with it but uh, Google, Google Blocky was the visual programming language that we used. Um, you can see it in action if you look up Scratch, where you know where you teach kids how to program with, with like little puzzle blocks. So <laughs> that's what we would use to program our backend, which was actually kind of fascinating. Um, so and that's that's kind of when I kind of stopped creating videos. Um, when that happened with work and so there was a little bit of that but then also life happened um, me and my husband decided to start a family and we did so if you ever hear a little mumpkin in the background <laughs> when I'm recording videos um, yeah anyway um, so back to kind of the reason for this channel was basically to learn programming or learning learning how to do something by sharing what I'm learning um, that's why I never really monetize my my channel why I would let it go dormant for you know a few years is because that was the purpose of it um, and then kind of to also encourage other people so I, I know a lot of people you know I think I've had like a couple of you know comments about oh you're encouraging because you know you're, you're you're teaching you know something I didn't know which was really great and so um, with that, I decided again, just kind of to change direction. And a lot of it came from kind of just life. So in my prior position, 
I was laid off. And, you know, if you ever experience a layoff, it obviously, it's very, very disruptive. I mean, come on, <laughs> it's disruptive. Um, but it made me think about a couple of things because I've, over the past couple of years, I have wanted to restart this channel. I just, honestly, I, I really couldn't pin down exactly what I want to do with it. And so I've decided actually, you know, being that I do like working with data, I do like being in, you know, that realm and I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm good at it. I mean, obviously I made money from it and made, made decent living off of it. And so I decided, okay, what can I do that I can still be and still deal with data? And still be in databases and, and things like that and I found out okay well you know I'm a data analyst you can get into machine learning you can get into data science and because all of it requires data you just do different things with it um, the engineering is another route I could, I could also take I could also take and so what I decided to do was I decided to go ahead and Again, learning about you know data science and machine learning. Um, I did want to pick up Python for the longest time, and honestly, the reason why I didn't choose Python as my first you know program and language to learn was because I didn't understand kind of how to use it. Like, I don't know how to kind of explain it, but there's a lot of steps you need to take. Um, especially if you have a Mac, <laughs> you can't, you have to be careful about like libraries and you have to use virtual environments um, because you can literally break your machine. <laughs> so that's the reason why I didn't learn Python and I wasn't very versed in dealing with virtual environments and things like that. Um, when I first wanted to learn programming, because I, I mean, I knew that Python obviously was one of the s easiest languages to learn. So again, the, the my idea for this channel is to one, help people who are new to a data career, data career, um, you know, either, you know, are completely new or maybe you're coming into this you know at a different point in in your life um, and you kind of want to see how how to get into it um, another so basically I want to help people who are new or people who you know obviously are changing careers and want to do it in a different way so um, a lot of the things that I will be sharing will be very data intensive in the sense like you will need to know obviously the basics of SQL, so how to, you know, how to pull data out. So with select statements, um, light light joins, things like that. But then I also want to share kind of how how to write SQL scripts, how to format them, because no one talks about how to format them. At least I haven't seen anything out there. And then kind of like more advanced things, like subqueries and transactions and things like that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that's fine. <laughs> I'll explain a lot of this later. Um, but then just kind of how to, to write your queries so that they don't take so long because there is kind of a, there's an art to it <laughs> to, to make sure that your query isn't, you know, taking 10 seconds. You might not think that's very long, but it's long <laughs> when you're waiting for a report to come through or to calculate or whatever. So, um, so basically I kind of want to share a lot of my knowledge that, I, that I've gained over the years as far as how to deal with data and, da and databases. Um, and then another thing is kind of what I don't see a lot and I'm at, I could be wrong. Let me know if I'm wrong in the comments. But um, a couple of the you know courses I've looked at, like Coursera or Data Camp, um, what's the other one? Codecademy. 
you know, they all they all say, okay, oh, you do this, this, and this for a data science career, or actually anything. They don't talk about sharing what you know. Um, they do say, obviously, to have a repository, a GitHub repository, which I completely agree. But I feel like you should have or start your online presence like immediately. <laughs> Just have kind of like a central spot for your stuff. Um, a lot of people talk about blogging. I agree, you should have blogging, but you need to in my opinion, have your own website, <laughs> period. Have your por portfolio website because it could be the central place, <clears throat> it could be the central place for everything. And so one of the many courses I'm gonna be offering, um, right now it's in pre-sale, so basically you can sign up for over half the cost because I haven't written it just yet, but I do have and have written that the template, so basically it's an HTML template that I actually created off of my own website. So when I got laid off, I, I'm like, oh crap, I have to completely redo everything. So I literally built this website from scratch in like a couple days um, because I, I needed to start looking for jobs immediately. <laughs> so, so it's based off of this website it's super lightweight um, basically I'll show you how to hook up your blog so I blog through Hashnode I used to manage my own blog back in and everything and I just I don't have time to redo a blog or build one from scratch um, especially when I got laid off so and I actually like Hashnode it there's community people see your posts, you know, and are able to comment, which is great. So why reinvent the wheel? <laughs> so uh, I use Hashnode's API. Actually, they don't have any, well, they do have an API, but I'll show how to use it because they use GraphQL in order to pull in data. Okay, so uh, basically I have APIs that I've already linked and I'll share all that with you. So if you're interested in getting your website up and running, which I highly recommend, especially if you're at the beginning of your career or you're changing your career, um, just having a central place that you can send people to. Because honestly, even, I mean, I'm looking for a job right now <laughs> and you, it's so surprising, especially if you're in like any technical field and you're you know, programmer or engineer, well, not so much engineer, well, I don't know, maybe. You let me know engineers out there if you need a website. But for the positions I've been applying to, people ask for your website, you know. So having that up and ready to go in the beginning is gonna help you out. So what I connect to my website is, one, my blog, um, YouTube videos, uh, another thing you need is a contact form, so I'll show you how to connect that without, you know, having to deal with CAPTCHA or anything. We'll actually use Form Spree, which is actually pretty awesome. Um, and then GitHub. So some people like to list their GitHub repositories. Mine is kind of all over the place. So I actually have like a project section where I, you know, you know just highlight those projects in my repository that I want people to look at <laughs> because my repository is <laughs> any tell I'm still working on it I've cleaned up a lot of it since I got laid off but man <laughs> there's a lot in there that I'm like I don't want to completely like share that anyways so that is one mini pro one, one mini course so that's one mini course that um, I want to share with you all if you're interested and then I'll have another mini course about advanced SQL. Anyway, so if you are interested, the, the links will be below and go ahead and check that out. Um, I'll probably post something else beyond this <laughs> if I forget. But anyways, thank you everyone. I appreciate you and hopefully you'll stick around if you've been around here. <laughs> if not, please subscribe. I appreciate it. All right, till next time friends. <laughs> you um, blow bubbles, mom. Okay, I'll blow the bubbles. One more bubbles. Okay, you grow bubbles. this fast. Blow bubbles. Okay. Bubbles. Bubbles. You grow much more. <laughs> I know there's so many bubbles. One more bubble. Okay, one more and then you blow bubbles, okay? Okay.
Okay. Your turn. There you go. Hi, Bubba. I get you. I gotta get you, Bubbles. <laughs>